Roughly half a mile deep under the barren Atacama Desert, those drill heads keep grinding ever closer. Above ground, rehearsals for the rescue are underway. The target area for the drill is known as the workshop, located across from and slightly higher than the miners' living area. The miners themselves will complete the rescue shaft by blasting it with dynamite. Engineers above ground will then use a TV camera to inspect the rescue hole and decide if it needs to be reinforced with a metal lining. Installing a lining could delay rescue anywhere from four to ten days. It's, it's not a technical piece of cake. Huh? And before any miners come out, a doctor and a rescue expert will go in. Once cleared, miners will leave in a pre-arranged order, first the strongest, then the sickest, and finally those considered psychologically sound enough to be the last ones out. In the nearby city of Popiopo, a stage is being set up to hold a giant screen so that folks here can watch the rescue live. The last few days have been encouraging, but the rest have been very anxious. We are all very anxious. While their loved ones are trapped in the mine, many family members have to keep living, keep working, and so this bus takes them to the mine every day. You're heading up to the mine right now. What are you thinking? What's going through your mind? We are so happy because we know this is almost over. Now, we're told this last hundred or so feet of drilling is meticulous work. Rescue workers want to be certain to be careful and not to damage the hole that has already been drilled. Maggie? And Seth, how long will it take to get all the miners to the surface once the rescue operation begins? Well, Maggie, we're told that once those miners start being hoisted to the surface, the entire process could take two days to lift all 33 men up. And Seth, how soon will those rescued miners get to see their families? Well, the ones who are healthy enough, Maggie, will be able to see them right away before they are all flown off to a local hospital for observation. Maggie? Seth Doan in Copiapo, Chile. Thank you, Seth. Rescuers plan to bring up the miners in a tiny capsule just a bit wider than the average man's shoulders. The engineers who designed it consulted with rescuers in Pennsylvania because eight years ago they used a similar capsule to pull nine men to safety from the flooded Q Creek mine. We sent national correspondent Jeff Glor to Somerset, Pennsylvania to see how it works. This is the rescue capsule that was used at Q Creek in 2002. It's still kept on site. It's slightly smaller than the one that will be used in Chile. This one is just over nine feet tall and 600 pounds. The one in Chile is 10 feet tall and weighs more than 900 pounds. But what hasn't changed as we get inside are the dimensions inside. Miners will be dealing with a diameter of 21 inches, so they'll be told to keep their hands in and their faces back as that door closes. The biggest difference and the biggest concern here is the distance traveled. In Pennsylvania, miners were only 240 feet below the ground. In Chile, it's 2,300 feet, almost 10 times the distance, and they're worried the capsule may get stuck somewhere, which is why they're taking their time to make sure that hole is really ready. In 2002, miners in Pennsylvania said they had nine perfect lifts, nine people saved. In Chile, they're hoping for 33. Jeff Glor, CBS News, Somerset, Pennsylvania.